bless and good day to all tuning in to Christ Jesus' Law Ministries. I want to welcome you back to the school room of Christ Jesus' Law Ministries. This is where we break down the scripture so that you can have a clear and concise understanding of what the Bible is teaching and what the apostles, the prophets, or the writers intend for us to understand or to walk away after we have read the Bible or studied it. Well, contrary to popular beliefs, there are many going about who have made themselves um, to be something more than they are. They are teaching heresies, they are teaching fallacies, they are teaching a doctrine that is contrary to that of the apostles to Jesus and to the holy prophets. And the Bible says, as Paul wrote, if any man come to you and teach anything other than that which is written in the word of God, consider him to be accursed. Now there are many accursed teachers, preachers, pastors, prophets. Out there, many are nothing but self-proclaimed apostles, self-proclaimed teachers, and they are leading many people astray. Well, Today, without much talking in this introduction to this subject, the subject will be, is Michael the Archangel Jesus? Well, contrary to popular opinions, popular teaching, popular beliefs by many, especially evangelical Christians, many hold that Michael is an angel of high, high rank. They will quote Daniel chapter 12 verse 1 and says that he is one of the princes. So there must be other princes. Now, they do not have uh, a knowledge of the original language wherein knowing that to translate then English you have to use definite articles and such the like but uh, if one were to read the original uh, language whether it be the Aramaic or the Hebrew which the book of Daniel was written in then they would have come away with the correct understanding of what the verse is saying well as I've said contrary to popular beliefs uh, many hold that Michael is just another angel is one of high rank well I must let you know based on my studies of the scripture from Genesis to Revelation Michael the Archangel is Jesus the Christ and I'm gonna prove that with you with the Bible I'm not gonna share any opinion with you I'm just telling you that based on what I have read in the Bible everything matches up and everything points to Jesus concerning Michael the Archangel being Jesus himself. Now, without further ado, let us pray. Father, we invite your presence in our midst, and we ask that you will remove pride, prejudice, arrogance from us. Eliminate ignorance also. And you said in your word, when light comes, command every man everywhere to repent. So, Father, as the truth is brought forth in this study, I pray those who have held to their contrary opinions and beliefs with regard to what the Bible teaches, they will let it go and hold fast to that which is the truth. Father, I pray that your will be done. Continue to bless, keep, guide and direct us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for tuning in once more. I'm not going to hold back any punches. This is the last round of Earth history, and it's like a boxing match. Now, you can't play safe. You're going to knock out your opponent. You're going to defeat him. You're going to give them all that you got. And this is what I'm doing. I'm not here to receive the accolades of anyone or for anyone to powder puff me and to put me on a pedestal, I'm here to do my part in proclaiming the truth of the living God. There are many out there saying they have truth, 
But trust me, when you match what they proclaim with the scripture, you can see that they are offbeat and what they are putting forth are just doctrines of devils. No, I'm not into that. I don't want any dealing with the devil. Now let us start. First scripture. Exodus chapter 3, verse 1 through 6. It says, Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. I want you to let this verse of scripture be a focal point from this passage of scripture that I'm reading. Verse 2, verse 3 now, And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. Now verse 4, And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here am I. Verse 5, And he said, Draw not neither, put off thy shoe from off thy feet, for the place wherein thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Now, let us, let us analyze this portion of scripture. Let us look at the, if you want to say, the historical background, the exegetical framework, the theological application, and the contemporary application of this verse, this passage of scripture. Historically, we know that Moses was in the desert of Midian, and Mount Horeb was considered the Mount of God. No, Moses was um, a shepherd for 40 years, and at the end of 40 years, Moses was keeping the flocks, and the, he saw a burning uh, bush with uh, not being consumed by the fire. The bush was on fire, but no harm was being done to the bush. And look what happened now. Look what happened. The Bible says in verse 2, which I told you to pay keen attention to. This is going to help you to understand the whole um, teachings or doctrinal um, point concerning Michael there. He says, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. It did not say that God it did not say Yahshua. You read in your English version the angel of the Lord. Verse 2. The angel of the Lord appeared. Now it is interesting to note that the Lord here is in all capital letters, caps lock as you would call it. In Hebrew, we refer to it as the Tetragrammaton. The word for Yahweh, Y-H-W-H. And it is considered the sacred name of God. No, it is not by any mere coincidence. Neither is it incidental. Why? The word Lord is in capsule. It refers to God. And whenever it is used... It is the subject is God. God is never the object. So when it says the angel of the Lord, it was not an angel of the Lord. The angel, which means the definite personage of God. Now, when we look at it 
we go down to verse 4, it says, And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see God call unto him out of the midst of the bush. No, notice the biblical author did not leave anything for assumption on the part of the reader or any speculation on the part of the student of scripture. It did not just say, when the Lord saw Moses turn to look at the bush that was not consumed with fire, that he called unto him. The Bible tell you that the angel of the Lord in verse 2 appeared in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush that was not being consumed with the fire. Now verse 4, explain it, exegete verse 2 and help us to have the correct understanding as to what was happening in verse 2. It says, and God call unto him out of the midst of the bush god could have been calling from anywhere else he could have been calling from heaven he could be calling from down in the valley or across the mountain or just from behind him or near to him but it says god the very one who is referred to as the angel of the lord what is happening here does scripture contradicts itself does scripture um, conflicts with itself is scripture inerrant yes it is inerrant it cannot hear there's no error here this is no scribal error now look at it it's a god called out of the midst of the bush so that clears up the whole aspect as to you having an understanding that the angel of the lord wherever in scripture where you see the angel of the lord not an angel because there are several um instances in the bible where you say an angel of the lord appeared unto such and such an individual but no it says the angel of the lord so here we can deduce from scripture we can understand from scripture that the angel of the Lord and God are one and the same. Are you with me? Leave a comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'm telling you, I look forward for you to leave your comment in the comment section. No, it says that God called out of the midst of the bush so the question is if, if, if the angel of the lord in verse 2 and god in verse 4 are not one and the same how is it that a transformation took place so quickly wherein an angel would have transformed into god and if there is an angel that can be transformed into god who is not god then that one would supersede God. And we know that God is and is all powerful and there is none who is above God. We know Jesus is God, the Holy Spirit is God, and God the Father, God, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, God. Three in one and one in three. Oneness of of of, of desire they are cohesive in all that they do for the good of their created beings now it must be understood and i do not intend for this to be a lengthy um study the Bible tells us, as I have pointed out before in Exodus, that the angel of the Lord appeared to Moses in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. What is interesting here is that the bush was not consumed or devoured by the fire. Verse 4 said God called out of the midst of the bush, Moses, Moses. So we see that verse 2, and verse 4 does not contradict each other. We see here that the angel of the Lord, as I said before, and God are one 
and the same. We are establishing a foundation upon scripture here now, not opinion. My opinion is relevant, likewise yours. We are on a journey. The book Exodus, the word means journey. So we are going to take a journey to discover the truth as in scripture, as to who the angel of the Lord is, which we have already established. But now it is, is left for us to establish who Michael the archangel is. Is he just an angel of iron or is he Jesus the Christ? Let us look at Daniel chapter 12 and we will look at verse 1. This is another instant in the word of God wherein we come across Michael the archangel. He says, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which stand for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. So here we see Michael, this powerful being, who is going to stand up for the people, the Jewish people. And not only the Jewish people, but all they who are written in the book. What book? The Bible speaks of three books. The book of record, the book of life, and the book of remembrance. In in in, 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 in the book of Malachi, we see that there's a book of remembrance for the people who thought of God and spoke of, of it. And in the book of Revelation, we come across the book of life and the book of records. So now we see that everyone who is written in the book of life, God is going to stand up in their defense when there is this time of trouble. There is... Uh, a uh, study it's in brevity when wherein i speak of the time of trouble um done um some time ago not very long you could check that out too um so we see that daniel chapter 12 speaks of michael standing up for the children of thy people he was speaking to daniel gabriel was telling him about it now we are going to look at revelation chapter 12 and we're gonna see verse 7 says about michael now chapter 12 and verse 7 says and there was war in heaven michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angel verse 8 and prevailed not neither was their place found anymore in heaven so here we see that Michael is made mention and referred to, and as we all know, that sin began in heaven. It's not on earth in the Garden of Eden where sin started with Adam and Eve. Sin started with the devil, and in heaven, and there was a war and we all know that the war is between christ and satan and there was a war the first war in heaven and michael who is jesus cast down the devil and they who were on his side who took side with him who the devil deceived they were cast down to the earth no the question still remains, who is Michael? And you'll be asking that you have proven to us who is Michael. Okay, let us go. Is he just another one of heaven's angels? Is he a seraph of high rank? Is he a cherub of high rank? Uh, or is he like Gabriel? Who, who is he? Is he one of heaven's highest angels, as they say, in the dictionary if you were to look at it that an archangel is an angel of high rank now if you were to follow the dictionary and its meaning trust me you will never have an understanding 
a fool Michael the Archangel is. In the dictionary, they will tell you that in traditional Christian angeology, that is the study of angels, is a being of the eighth order of the ninefold celestial hierarchy. Now, if I were to take my dictionary to, 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 to say, who is an archangel? Uh, I, I would be lost here with this definition. It has no substance. It does not clarify anything. It does not give me an understanding of anything. So let us go to Jude 9. Uh, Jude is the book which precedes Revelation. It's the penultimate book of the New Testament and of the Bible. So let us look what Jude 9 says. It says, And, uh, no, rather, yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. Notice that in this verse, the three most important words are, Michael, Lord, and archangel we see here in jude 9 that michael raised moses from the dead and issued a divine decree upon the devil no he said the lord rebuke thee he is the one who will raise the dead again to life and immortality those who according to daniel chapter 12 verse 1 are written in the book we see that Moses appeared on the Mount of Transfiguration with Elijah. Now, Moses died in the mountain and he received an angelic funeral. And we do not know what point in history or time that Christ resurrected Moses from the dead. But we know that he was buried. And the Bible said, no man know where his sepulchre or where he was buried up until this day. Now, the only person who has the power to resurrect the dead is Jesus Christ. Yes, you may say that, okay, prophets have raised the dead, apostles have raised the dead, but the question, where do they get the power from to raise the dead? They have to be in Christ and have Christ and the Holy Spirit working through them. It's not they who raise the dead, but it is the power of the Holy Spirit who uses them as a vessel. For them to do such miracles but when we speak of the dead reason if we look at john chapter 11 and verse 35 talking to martha jesus said i am the resurrection and the life he that believeth though in me though he were dead yet shall he live he even goes further says, and he who who lives shall never die now, who resurrected Moses? Who is the resurrection and the life? That's a question you need to ask yourself. Is he another angel of high rank who is above Jesus? No, Jesus here, it, it, it says it in John eleven twenty five. I am the resurrection and the life. And Jesus called Lazarus from the tomb and said, Lazarus, Lazarus, come forth. If Jesus had just said, come forth, all the dead from Adam until Lazarus would have raised. So he had to specify and say, Lazarus, come forth. Now, let us give um, a verse of scripture that will clarify who michael the archangel is and if you want to be in denial that's up to you i'm not here to force anything upon you i'm not a witch neither am i a wizard to cause you to believe that which you do not want to believe but i'm presenting the word of god to you in clear concise format where you can understand it even as a little child no first thessalonians 4 and verse 16 says for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel. Make that marinate for a minute. Who will descend from heaven? The Lord. John chapter 14, verse 1, 2. Jesus told his disciples, let not your heart be troubled. 
you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. He says, if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Revelation chapter 1 verse 7 says, Be holy, come with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierce him, and all kindred of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. In the, 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 the Revelation and chapter 1 and verse 18, Jesus says, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. So, there is no um, dispute. There sh should be no confusion as to who raised Moses. And if Moses died in the mountain and was buried. Question is, how is it that he appeared on the Mount of Transfiguration? It must be that he was resurrected. And we see that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. According to John 11, 25. I just have to reiterate that. And let that marinate and sink in your brain. In First Thessalonians, he said the Lord himself. Which Lord? Jesus the Christ. The very one who raised Moses. The one who raised Lazarus. He said the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. with the show of the archangel now we see in jude chapter one rather he has only one chapter it's a letter it's an epistle jude nine he says yet michael the archangel who contended with the devil disputing about the body of Moses. He didn't bring about any accusation against them, but only rebuked him. He should have divine command, and because he was divine, he could issue that divine command upon him. Now, we see here that Scripture interprets Scripture. And the Bible tells us in June 9, Michael is the archangel. First Thessalonians four sixteen unmistakably tell you that Jesus will descend uh, with the voice of the archangel. No, um, Jude uh, nine says Michael the archangel. No, there is only one archangel. It, uh, not archangel. Archangel. And it means that he is the one who is transcendent above all others. The one whom they look to for. He is the example to all others. He is the chief angel. He is the top of the angelic hierarchy in terms of power. No, he wasn't created by God. He is God. And we need to understand that in order for God to have ministered to mankind, first John chapter 1 tells us how that happened. He says in verse 14 that the word became flesh and dwell amongst men. Now God took on flesh to dwell amongst men. So in order for him to dwell amongst his angelic hosts, and to minister to them, he took on the form of an angel. But not just an ordinary angel. He is the general for them. And he is the, the one who is, is, is that they look to. As an example. Now. It tells us that. He will come with the voice of an archangel. And with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise. Her. So it is the Lord with the voice of the archangel. Who will raise the dead. And First Thessalonians 4.16. Makes that clear. Now according to Roy Allen Anderson. In his book, Unfolding Daniel's Prophecies, chapter 19, paragraph 5 and line 1, he says, Michael means, quote, 
who is like God, end quote. He is like God because he is God. From eternity he is one with the Father. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 and Hebrews 10 verse 12 says Jesus sat down on the right hand of God. Now, it is important for us to understand that the Bible does not contradict itself. It does not conflict with itself. It interprets itself. And it is inerrant. It is not in error. For those who want to say that we make a pope out of the Bible. When we say that it is inerrant. Well, they can speak what they want to speak. And they will have to give an account. For everything that they speak on that day of judgment. Now, I have presented the Bible to you. I have presented the scripture to you. Now, if you think that you can refute it, I want you to present scriptures in the comment section. I want you to flood the, the comment section with um, comments stating why you believe Michael the Archangel is not Jesus. Or why you are in belief of the scriptures which are presented which points to us that Jesus is Michael, the archangel, or the archangel is Michael and Jesus, one and the same. There is a verse of scripture that I should have shared with us, and it comes to us from Joshua chapter 5, verse 13. And it says, And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversary? And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord am I now come. And Joshua fell on his face of the earth and did worship and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground, is holy. And Joshua did so. So we see that this is a parallel scripture to Exodus chapter 3 and verse 4, which I read, wherein God told, uh, um, God told Moses to take off his shoe, for where he was standing, it is holy ground. And we see that this man that Joshua saw said that he had come as captain of the Lord of hosts. The word host there is a is an archaic word for armies. So he's the captain of the Lord's armies. And Jesus is the one who's the captain of the Lord's army. He's no other angel. And Michael, as I've read in some place, uh some book I've read, I can't recall it, but I'm not going to bring it to you as doctrine. He said, Michael is the military name um, for Jesus. That's the military commanding name that he takes on. Um, I'm not presenting to you as doctrine because I cannot um, back that to you with scripture. However, here we see that. The man told Moses to told Joshua that he came as the captain of the Lord of Armies, and he said to Joshua, "Loose off your shoe for we you stand." We know that is the presence of God that makes a place or a thing holy, or something has to be consecrated, dedicated to God for it to be holy, and that would have to be in his house or be some place. Now, it is without dispute; it is without refutation. That this passage here tells you that it is Jesus himself, pre-incarnate, who took on the form of a man with a sword drawn in his hand. And let um, Joshua knew that he was God. May God bless you. May God keep you. And may you share these timely Bible studies with someone. And I hope and trust that you have been learning. 
from Christ Jesus' law ministry. And I invite you back to the schoolroom because I have great stuff, great teaching in store for us, knowledge to share with us for us to have a better understanding of the word of God. Like, share, subscribe for those of you who have not subscribed. And God bless you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the privilege that I could have come and explain the subject which many have been teaching falsely and many misunderstands and many have been seeking answers for. I hope that this study has provided the answer for the many questions and removed the confusion from the minds of many. And I pray that you will continue to lead us into the truth because you say in John 8, 32, that we shall know the truth. The truth shall set us free. So, Father, set us free with your truth and eliminate ignorance from us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Hit the notification bell because there are no uploads on the rise and on the way. God bless you.